from the Hard Rock Hotel in Las Vegas, it's the Cube covering HoshoCon 2018. Brought to you by Hosho. Well, everyone, welcome back to our live coverage here in Las Vegas for HoshoCon. It's first industry security conference dedicated to security in the blockchain. It's, it's presented by Hosho and also the industry. It's an industry conference, it's not necessarily a Hosho conference. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE for our coverage. Our next guest is Kinsey Cronin, Vice President of Business Development with Prime Trust. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me here. So, um, crowdsourcing and crowdfunding, all this has been a big part of it. I mean, terrorists are funding through Bitcoin. You got all kinds of things going on in entrepreneurial spaces. So it's certainly the money's flowing with, with, with crypto. Yes. Um, what do you guys do, before we get into some of the things that we want to talk about, what is Prime Trust? Take a minute to explain uh, your business, business model, value proposition. Absolutely, so Prime Trust is a trust company. So it's a regulated financial institution that holds funds um, between transactions, between businesses. You could also use Prime Trust to create a, a trust account for uh, an individual as well. So what our value is in this industry is that we hold crypto assets, which very few qualified custodians like us exist to do that. So that's a really important part of bringing in institutional funding because institutions are looking for qualified custodians mm -hmm. as a regulated place to keep funds and they want to get into crypto. So it's a, it's a very important part of the puzzle. So custody and custodial services have been a big topic here at HojoCon. Mm -hmm. uh, controversial on the keynotes as well because you know, the purists will say, hey, like Andreas, why do we need custody if it's working? It's, just, it's the same old guard with new faces, new business cards. Um, it's not really revolutionary, and that's on one end. On the other end of the spectrum is, there's so much growth and activity, we got to mm -hmm. have trusted partners to actually help us manage the risk and do these things. So you have, again, two spectrums. What's the story? What should people understand about these two dynamics? Well, what I think, um, yeah, what I think the, the keynote you're talking about, the, the idea is we are just trading one type of banker for another type of banker, right? That's happening anyway. <laughs> so you are, you're trading one type of financial system for another type of financial system. The question is what does that look like and how can we be secure and safe in that space, right? Personally, I'm a big fan of anything that requires some kind of a license, right? And it's not because I think it's really fun to go through the bureaucratic process of getting a license or filling out paperwork, but it's really because th that, once you have a license, that license can be taken away from you if you misbehave, right? And that's really important. So if you're following the laws that are set forth that are designed to protect people, and you, then you break those laws, then you're not, you're not allowed to do that anymore, right? Yeah. So that's what you get out of having regulation involved in this space. It's, it's protection, and it's making sure that the rules are And by are the way, the regulation is happening anyway, so that's another yeah, thing. Yeah, the regulation that's is happening. happening anyway. And that's why these very smart people who are managing billions of dollars are looking for that. They're not saying, oh cool, you have a website that with technology that I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. You're telling me that you can safely hold mm -hmm. something, but there's no other protection there, there's no liability. Yeah. You could just mount gox me, right? And so there's got to be a way to get some sort of uh, some sort of regulation in there. And I know there's a lot of opinions in the space and obviously I, I'm very much on the side of regulation. Yeah, and it also, I mean it's a balance. At the end of the day, those are polarized positions, but I think the mm -hmm. industry recognizes growth. Mm -hmm. They're recognizing the domicile problem of companies and, and governments. So the question is, you know, really than the license is <laughs> legitimacy is people want legitimacy, trust, and growth. Yes. At the same time, what the other side says is, hey, you know, who are those people making the laws? So who's <laughs> taking what away? So again, this is the ecosystem that will solve these problems, in mm -hmm. my opinion. I, mean, I, I believe that, you know, as much as I love the purest view, um, and I think there's architectural, technical things that make that happen, at the end of the day is the self-governance of the community really is, is what needs to happen here. And so that's where the growth comes in, because mm -hmm. if real money's coming in to the sector, you've got to have parties that are trusted. That's my opinion. All right, so what do you think about um, the conference here? What's your takeaway so far? I'll see, it's uh, you know, kind of diverse background. You got you know, people walking around mm -hmm. with colorful costumes to yeah. you know, buttoned up bankers and um, ex FBI agents and NSA agency folks. Yeah, we're <laughs> in a really funny time in this space, I think, because you still have, yeah, the, the 
Bitcoin garb and the f like, you know, the flashing glasses and and then you yeah, you've got people who spent yeah. 20 years on Wall Street and now they're in the space. Uh, so I've I've seen that actually a lot lately in the last year at yeah. these conferences yeah. and it's very interesting. Um, I love when both sides can come in with an open mind to the other uh, because I think there's something to be learned on both sides, absolutely. So for the people who have been in the traditional regulated space, they are getting all this inspiration and the, the possibility of doing things differently. Yeah. Um, the system, that the financial system that we have now is one, it's essentially yeah. you know a very old house that's just been added onto and mm -hmm. built and there's corridors going yeah. into stairways that you know don't go anywhere, right? And that's that's something that needs to be fixed and, yeah. and it is being fixed. Well, security is a driver in all this, and I think one of the things I've observed here, I'd love to get your reaction to, is you have the, the crypto world that's certainly changing a lot of the dynamics on the global scale. Mm -hmm. You have cybersecurity, and then you have FinTech. So you guys, and this is where everything I think is a melting pot, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. You have all these things happening, but at the center of all this is security. Absolutely. It's almost like we're all swimming out to the, to the raft, and whoever gets there first and wins the security model, you wins think? it all. Well, no. I think. I think. Well, I think this. The conversation all threads through security. Sure. So the cyber conversations we've had are like, okay, cyber security for individuals and nation states, mm -hmm. cryptocurrency for protection and freedom and and um, you know immutability ledgers and all those great supply chain aspects. And then you got the fintech, which is like, hey, people want to do business. <laughs> so you have the entire changeover on the financial services side, all kind of happening. Yeah, yeah. I think that they're all going to be contributing to a solution. It's, it's each one is going to learn. We're really open-minded at Prime Trust. We want to build and grow. We know that this. We are in the most embryonic stage of this, and so we don't know exactly what's going to come next or what's going to be down the road. And we want to be informed by everybody that's around us at yeah, a place. And it makes sense because you have to work with the, with the industries. So take mm -hmm. me through. I want to ask you a question about your job. So what, take me through the day in the life of what's going on at Prime Trust. What are some of the things that you guys do, customers, and what are they asking for? What's the what's the some of the, the issues you guys are solving? What are some of the dynamics? Can you share some color sure. around that? Sure. So our our main services are. Um, so we are a trust company. So we do escrow services and we do. Um, compliance on all of the escrow that comes through our ICOs and STOs that come through. So that's AML and KYC. So that's really important. Um, what distinguishes us, I think, is a real, real game changer for our customers is that we're really a, a technology company and we have API stacks that allow for companies to build their businesses on top of integration so that they have customers coming in and making accounts on their, their their website, so a their for dashboard, their platform, and that's all feeding directly in. They're actually making an account so at PrimeCast. So you're, so you're building, you're, you're targeting folks saying, hey, we'll take care of the heavy lifting on KYC, M AML, and all the stuff that needs to happen. That's yes. heavy lifting that's around yeah. Custodial services. Custodial services. All the crypto escrow comes in services. through you. Yeah, so it comes in, we can hold it, we can review it. You're not having asset managers also holding funds, which is a problem. Um, so you're not needing to touch the funds at all. You can just yeah. you can just do what you're yeah. trying to do in this space and we'll take care of that aspect so of it. So that's entrepreneurial side, that's the STOs and the ICOs. Mm -hmm. um, what's the alternative uh, for the your customer build their own, go with um, unknown shop of their other. So what's the, if I if it's a great service, sounds like a great service, and takes a lot of pressure off the build out of a mm -hmm. of an opportunity. But what's the alternative if someone doesn't go with you? They have to build well, their own. Well, there's a few. I mean, it's to hold your own funds, right? Figure mm -hmm. that out on your own. In the case of many different types of funds and businesses, um, yeah. their boards are not okay with that because it's it's too much risk and liability. Yeah. Um, so in many cases, the alternative is don't do it yet. Mm -hmm. Just keep watching and waiting and wanting to be in crypto, but you can't yet. Uh, so and, and we're seeing that a lot. That. Uh, there's like a sigh of relief when we finally have this conversation yeah. and it, it turns out it's extremely easy to make an account with us and suddenly that major roadblock is just gone. Yeah. Um, so that's what, that's the kind of big solution. accelerates the opportunity. Takes the risk off the table a little yeah. bit and accelerates the opportunity. I mean, the SEC, impossible. Decrypt yesterday was reporting that the SEC in the United States is actually going into ICOs and having them return their money because of Of they, course they are. Just like, yeah. <laughs> well, of course they are. That makes sense. Uh, that's, they were always going to do that. Just because yeah. they make a statement and slowly decide how to act. Because mm -hmm. look, last July is when they said, we're going to do this. And most of the crypto community said, you can't because 
we really don't want you to. And, yeah. and we are going to tell ourselves all these excuses for why it's not possible for the US government to actually pursue this and why they won't really do it because they're dinosaurs. Yeah. And that's just not how the government works. So the way the government does work is that they, everything takes a long time and it's all thought through and mm -hmm. there are a million different approval processes within the system and they don't tell you anything until they're really ready to stand by whatever statement they make. So they leave you in the dark for eight months, a year, whatever. Yeah. Well, you guys have a good opportunity, so I got to ask the question, what's the business model? How does someone engage with you guys? Sounds like they go in and create an account. Is there a mm -hmm. fee involved? What's the fee? Can you share? the uh, engagement uh, that someone would, would engage with you on? Sure, so they can visit our uh, website, which is primetrust.com. They can email me, at Kinsey at Prime Trust, pretty easy. Um, and uh, we have different pricing for escrow services versus custodial services. Um, and uh, we actually pay interest on any fiat that we hold in custody. And uh, we charge a monthly basis point fee based on how much is in uh, in custody with us. Okay, and where's you guys located? Where's the company located? Headquarters is here in Vegas. Nevada, okay. in Las Vegas. Um, I'm based out of Los Angeles. We've got some team members in San Francisco and New York as well. That's awesome. So let me ask you a question. How did you get into the uh, space? What's your story? I got into the space, um, I started out in equity crowdfunding. Uh, so I was working with companies that were raising capital under A+, Reg D, um, and uh, Reg CF, and I was in the trenches with them, figuring out from like the very earliest days how, what the laws were going to look like, you know, launching companies the day the regulations came out, uh, or came into effect, and then sort of working through that. So it's been an adventure on that side, mm -hmm. and then, um, my first uh, experience in crypto was um, at, an, at a meetup in Santa Monica where companies were talking about raising $40 million in 10 seconds and that, and they were also pitching in, in methods I, I knew were not legal. Um, so it was just kind of just You're jaw like, dropping for yeah, me. Yeah. Well, one was how did you manage to get that many people to want to invest in you so quickly? Because it's a struggle for, for, for many companies and then uh, so that's amazing, I want to learn more about that. And then also, did you know that there's a more legal way to do this? Um, <laughs> and that you're putting yourself at a lot of risk. Uh, so that made me really want to jump in and figure yeah. this out. So you got totally intoxicated by the Wild West. Yeah. You know, this, is, this is a problem, they got to be solved in there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun at the same time because, you know, although those days are over, um, thankfully so, because you know it should be it should be more legitimized, and it is getting there. And I mm -hmm. think security tokens are a good sign um, that people are moving more to security tokens, at least in the U.S. The legal firms, the service providers, are starting to get leveled up on some of the new things, mm -hmm. um, and that's good. Still expensive to, to run the run the process. It's like going public almost as a startup. It's almost ridiculous. And I kind of had the same view. Where are the gaps, um, in your opinion? So you know, obviously look at the crowdfunding, which has been great, you see all that stuff mm -hmm. happening. This essentially is a decentralized you know, efficiency around mm -hmm. disrupting venture capital and other fundraising, which is great. Where are the gaps in your mind, from a service provider standpoint, from an ecosystem? Where's the to-do item? What needs to get done faster? Um, where are the gaps? Um, I think everybody's building out their technology to make everything easier. Currently, there's a lot that's done manually, um, or just too manually, and needs to be more automated. Um, and then I think there's also a lot of education on both sides that needs to be yeah. done. That's, that's I think, a huge gap. Um, there's a tendency to create echo chambers, yeah. and so you end up talking with people who just won't even consider the other side of it, or the possibility for yeah. change um, in whichever area they're in. And that is, I think, we are going to see that come together, but that tends to hold people back. Great. Kizzy, thanks for coming on and sharing your insights. Great to have you on theCUBE, and uh, good luck with Prime Trust. Thank you. Okay, this is theCUBE live coverage here at HoshoCon. I'm John Furrier, stay with us. More live coverage after this short break. Thank <laughs> you.